Starship Renegades Beginnings by S.J. Bryant Read for you by Richard Parry Chapter 1 Carrie hunkered behind a rock with a plasma pistol clutched to her chest while gunfire cracked across the desolate landscape like the cackling of a mad witch. The electric tang of plasma shots filled the air, lifting the hairs on Carrie's arms in waves of static electricity. A sharp pop. The side of the boulder exploded, sending pieces of shrapnel raining over Kari's shoulders and coating her hair in fine dust. Return fire! Captain Peters roared. Kari spun, aimed around the side of the rock, and fired at the enemy. They, at least, had buildings to hide behind. Blue beams of plasma streamed from Kari's weapon, leaving black smears across the nearest building. No bodies, though. Come on! Captain Peters said. Carrie fell behind her boulder. How many more shots before it disintegrated? Not many. But damn it, where else was she supposed to hide? Desert and thin tufts of grass surrounded the grimy band of rebels in all directions, except to the north, where the enemy hid inside a settlement of sand-blasted buildings. Losing your aim? A large shadow lumbered towards Carrie, crouching beside her. Riker, get the hell out of here and find your own rock! You won't fit behind this thing. There were shots than you are, he said. Guns sprouted from Riker's belt and protruded from his back like spines. He carried a shotgun in each hand, each weapon thicker than Carrie's whole arm. I thought they weren't supposed to be any defenders in this settlement, Carrie said. You know they say you can't trust intelligence, Riker said. Not in times of rebellion, anyway. How many did you count? Fifty at least. Damn it! Three to one. What sort of odds are those? Not ones I'd choose. Captain Peters appeared at their side, his rebellion-issued rifle across his chest. Which I guess makes us beggars in this scenario. Sir, Carrie said, we can't stay here. We'll be killed, and they might have sent for reinforcements. Exactly. On my signal, we're going on the offensive. Formation Theta. You stay here and do the bat. No, sir. Peters froze turned on her. What's that, soldier? I won't stay here, sir. The front line is where I belong. Soldier, you've been ordered. Best to change the orders, Gary said, because I'll be on the front line either way. She was the best damn fighter they had. How could she trust anyone else to take care of the enemies like she would? Gary, Peter said, this is a delicate mission. You have to trust your fellow... Gary stared back at him unblinking. A muscle worked in Peter's jaw. Fine. I'll get Bola to hold back. Pass on the plan. Carrie nodded. She'd learned a long time ago that if you wanted a job done properly, you had to do it yourself. She leaned out from her cover just far enough to catch sight of the next rebel. Theta formation. Captain signal. The message echoed down the line, fading out of Carrie's hearing beneath the incessant pops of gunfire. A lot of people will die, Riker said. There must be another way. Riker, if you didn't want to kill, you shouldn't have signed up for fighting a rebellion. Riker stared down at his feet. It could have been me over there, just another Imperium soldier. But it's not. But it could have been. Gary jabbed her elbow into his massive arm. And I could have been born with two heads. Snap out of it, Riker. You're not helping anyone. You're a renegade, and that's all that matters now. Before you know it, we'll be back at base, and you'll be cooking me one of your famous roasts. You could cook for once. He drew a deep breath and sat a little straighter, without putting his head over the top of the boulder. I know you're right. It's just being out in the open. It'll be better once we take the settlement, Carrie said. Then at least we'll have a base to work from, a roof over our heads. They'd been slogging through the desert for two days from their drop point to this tiny village. The pilots had refused to risk landing closer to potential enemies, even though it meant the rebels had to fight tooth and nail in the scorching sunlight. Another example of people looking after themselves rather than doing their damn jobs. Sand scratched every inch of Carrie's flesh, even inside her mouth. The sooner they left the blasted desert behind, the better. I only signed up so that I could do rescue missions, Riker said. I know, Carrie said, patting his arm. 
She'd never understand how a brute like him, with guns sprouting from him like leaves, claimed to be a pacifist. Go! Peters roared. Months of training clicked into place, forcing Carrie to move before she properly registered that Peters had spoken. She darted around the left side of the boulder, Riker taking the right, and sprinted towards the buildings. She fired, blue blasts crackling through the air and slamming into the nearest wall. Riker raced beside her, roaring and firing both of his guns at once. He looked like a mad bull on a rampage, his heavy footsteps leaving deep gouges in the sand. Beyond him, the rest of the rebel band ran, Peters among them. They fired and yelled, chewing up the distance to the settlement. It must have taken the defenders by surprise because it took a few moments for them to return fire. A barrage of deadly bursts of plasma crackled from hidden guns and streamed into the rebels. The woman on the other side of Riker took a shot to the chest. The blast burst through her ribcage, sending flesh and bone flying, and leaving behind a smoking ruin. The woman's momentum carried her forward three more paces before her legs gave out, and she fell, dead before she hit the ground. Carrie clenched her teeth and kept running. She hadn't known the woman, not really, but the woman had loved talking about her cats. Who would feed them now? A bright red blast of plasma exploded near Carrie's right foot. Sand erupted in all directions, peppering Carrie's legs. She lost her balance, stumbled, but managed to keep her feet. The need for justice, the need to get revenge for the woman, and her cats, and for Piper, kept her moving. The buildings drew closer. Graffiti sprayed across the corrugated walls, coming into focus. Freedom forever. A helmeted head appeared beside the building, right near the first F. Carrie lifted her gun and fired without breaking stride. Her shot slammed into the enemy's head, knocked it out of view behind the building, but a moment later, the whole upper torso fell out from behind cover. The man wore a grey casing of protective armour with the enforcer's insignia embossed on the front, spattered with blood. The armour would have stopped Carrie's shot too if the idiot had thought to put his face shield down. Carrie felt nothing as she ran at the enemy, shooting at anything that moved. The enforcers had taken Piper. They destroyed Carrie's life. They deserved to die. It didn't matter to her if these were the same enforcers or not. They were all part of the same faceless, evil group, doing the dirty work for the people of Albion. Well, this time they'd get what they deserved. The Imperium had gone too far, and the rebellion would triumph. Carrie reached the first building. She paused a fraction of a second, allowing a stream of red blasts to skim past. The heat of them scorched her arms. When the shots stopped, she darted around the corner, firing before she could see what to aim at. Didn't matter, though. The line of shots had made it easy to guess the enemy's position, a common mistake. The enforcer staggered under the force of Carrie's shots, but his armor, face shield down, protected him from the blasts. Black scorch marks showed where Carrie had hit, but had done little damage. Carrie kept running, keeping just ahead of the enemy's shots. She returned fire, but her pistol might as well have been a bow and arrow for all the good it did. A shot landed an inch away from Carrie's right foot, displacing the sand. The desert gave way beneath her, making her stagger. She scrambled, managed to catch herself on one knee, and kept running, glancing over her shoulder. Riker rounded the corner just a few moments behind Carrie, long enough that she'd drawn the enforcer's fire as planned. Riker planted his feet, charged up the massive shotguns he carried, and fired. Purple shots crackled through the air, slamming into the enforcer with enough force to knock him off his feet. He flew back, hit the building behind him, and slid to the ground. A hole gaped in his armor with mangled organs and rivulets of blood spilling out. Riker didn't look at the body, but Carrie did. She liked to make sure they were dead, and take a small amount of pleasure in knowing that another enforcer was gone. Carrie and Riker ran around the back of the buildings to come up behind a group of three enforcers in close combat with some rebels. Riker charged his weapon and took out two, while Carrie darted forward and disengaged the armor-locking mechanism from the last. His helmet fell free, and a moment later his head exploded, courtesy of one of the rebels. The spatter of gunfire slowed, then stopped. Carrie stood, panting hard but with gun still in hand until she heard Captain Peter's voice ringing through the buildings. Good work, everyone. The settlement is secure. Carrie sagged, letting her arm drop, 
but keeping a tight grip on her pistol. If the rebellion had taught her anything, it was to always be careful. Deeper into the settlement, the building sported scorch marks. Entire doors had been blown off and shattered glass covered the ground. I don't think we were the first ones to fight here, Riker said. Carrie gestured to a building, the third one they'd passed with Freedom Forever painted on its side. The people here didn't want enforcer control. Well, it's a bloody mess, Riker said, nudging his toe against a clump of sand, glued together and stained with something red. Only for now, Carrie said. But the rebellion is nearly over. We've almost won. A grin broke over Riker's face. It's just like the uprising in Lemus, a great victory, or the final scene in Over Territory, and... Whoa, Carrie said. I get it. It's good. Where Riker found the time to read all those books, she had no idea. Do you think any of them survived? Riker said, voice turning somber. The town looked a wreck, with bomb and plasma damage everywhere, and the lingering smell of burnt wood and plastic in the air. Carrie shrugged. They must have known about the safe house. But if they knew about it... It's fine, Carrie said. Last report from the civilians was all clear. Riker snorted. Civilians, like you're not. Carrie stood up straighter. I'm a soldier, same as you. I guess, although you're not getting paid for it. Not in tokens, Carrie said. But you know what it's worth to me. I do, Riker said. So I understand, but sometimes... Hurry up, people, Peter said. We're sitting up in the bar. A cheer from the rebels. Don't get too excited, Peter said. We've got action tomorrow, so one drink each and that's all you're getting. Grumbles, but nobody argued. Carrie had fought with a lot of these men and women before. They were good soldiers. She frowned at the gathering crowd. Some faces were missing. Harley and Bola, she said. Riker shook his head. They didn't make it. Carrie swallowed the lump in her throat, forcing a grim smile. Not bad for being outnumbered three to one. They weren't the first to die for the revolution, and they wouldn't be the last. But damn, she would miss Harley's jokes, and Bola's cooking. Just two more things the Imperium had to answer for. Chapter 2 Harry, Riker, you're on first watch, Peter said, disappearing into the warm glow of the settlement's only bar. The other mercenaries cheered, patting Carrie and Riker on the back as they traipsed past. Don't worry, Becca said, I'll save you a drink, maybe even a bit of food if you're lucky. Thanks, Carrie said. Playful banter didn't bother her, but damn, if they didn't save some food for her, there would be hell to pay. Her stomach growled in agreement. Carrie and Riker took up positions near the main door, guns in hand. The other rebels would secure any other doors from the inside, creating a defensible position. Carrie brushed dust off the rough patch sewn onto her chest of her jacket, a pair of crossed pistols with wings spread behind. The symbol of the renegades. The symbol of freedom. So, Carrie said, needing to fill the silence, a settlement like this should have been buzzing with noise. Lights should have glowed from every window. Instead, darkness and silence lay over the place like a thick, suffocating blanket. What are you going to do once we win? After the revolution, Riker said. That's easy. I'll be governor. Carrie snorted. What? Riker scowled. Governor of Zenith? Where else? I didn't know you had such political aspirations. Haven't you been listening? Politics is the only way to change the world. Right, and that's why we're here, freezing our asses off with gun in hand. Riker fell silent, staring into the night with his dark, almost black eyes. Carrie sighed and scuffed her boot in the dirt. Why did she have to go and say that? They both knew to steer clear of politics. Even talking about the rebellion was dangerous ground. She didn't think they'd ever see eye to eye, because he would never understood how much she hated the Imperium and everything they stood for. They stood in awkward silence for hours, Carrie wishing she could think of something to say, but her mind coming up blank. She fiddled with the hunk of rock that hung from a tattered piece of rope around her neck while Riker played with his damn astral map. Probably imagining all the places he'd visit when he became governor. Poor, misguided bastard.
The night grew thicker, wrapping them in cold. Carrie's legs ached from standing in one place, and the grumbling from her stomach grew louder until she was sure even the people inside the bar would be able to hear. Why hasn't Peter sent someone to relieve us yet? She said. I'm damn starving. Did you offend him again? Not that he mentioned. Carrie bit down on an argument about how the last time it wasn't her fault anyway. She'd just been saying that they were cowards to wait so long to go on the offensive. This rescue mission should have started a week ago when they first got word of stranded civilians. Maybe he forgot, Riker said. Or decided to ignore that one drink rule of his. Just stay here and try not to shoot anything. Riker slid one gun into a holster at his belt and rested the other on his shoulder before shoving open the door and going down the three short steps into the light of the bar. Carrie turned her gaze from the brightness. She couldn't risk being blinded to the darkness in case enemies were closing in from the shadows. Gary. What is it? Damn, they're being quiet. Gary, get in here. We can't both leave the post. Do you know what Peters will do if he finds out? Hell, Gary, get in here. Riker's voice shook, coming out several octaves higher than usual. Gary had never heard him sound so panicked. She spun, gun ready, and rushed to the entrance. Harsh light lay over the room within. Bodies. Her rebel companions lay twisted on the floor in pools of their own vomit, or splayed on the tables, blood dripping from their noses. Captain Peters sprawled, limp in a chair, head back and eyes closed. What the hell? Carrie said. Riker pulled her in, shutting the door behind her and trapping them both inside the room of death. The sour smell of vomit and piss hung heavy in the air. A single bottle of top-shelf whiskey sat on the bar, unopened. Carrie's arms dropped to her side as she shuffled deeper into the bar. Her head spun. What had happened? She and Riker had been standing just outside. No one could have got past. It's the food, Riker said. It has to be. They can all be dead, Carrie said, her voice husky. She shoved her gun into her belt and ran to Peter's side, having to step over half a dozen limp bodies to get there. She pressed her fingers to his neck, held her breath. A faint pulse brushed her fingertips. He's still alive. These aren't, Riker said from where he knelt between the two bodies, hands on their necks. Cold gripped Carrie's chest. How much time did they have? What sort of poison? Damn it, she didn't carry any kind of antidote. The medic she said. What's his name? Check his supplies. Maybe he has something. Riker sifted through the piles of bodies until he found the man. He pressed a massive hand to the man's chest. Dead. His supplies, Carrie said. She lifted Captain Peter's head so they didn't choke on his own tongue. Riker tore open the medic's bag, pulling out bandages, needles, small vials. He studied each label, then tossed them aside. There's nothing here. Carrie's heart hammered. We need to do something. We have to save the ones we can. We'll find everyone that's still breathing, Riker said. Assess the situation. Carrie nodded once. She eased the captain onto the floor, rolling him into the recovery position before moving on to the next soldier. Dead. The next, Becker, who had offered to save Carrie food, dead. The one after that had the faintest pulse, but blood dripped from his nose. Carrie rolled him onto his side so that the blood could drain out. Riker worked through the other side of the room. Of the fifteen rebels that had gone into the bar, only nine were still breathing. Carrie stood in the middle of the room, rage making her limbs tremble. These were good people, brave people, and the enforcers had tried to kill them with poison food? Cowards. The Imperium were nothing but cowards. Riker carried those that had died to the side of the room, where he laid them out in two neat rows. What the hell do we do now? Carrie said. We wait. Hope that they wake up. Maybe the captain knows what happened. We know what happened. The enforcers couldn't beat us with guns, so they poisoned all the food. Carrie's hands clenched into fists. She wished there were an army of enforcers in front of her, something to fire at, to take her rage out on. It wasn't fair. Where's the honor in poisoning food? And what if it hadn't been rebel soldiers that ate here? What if it had been innocent civilians? The enforcers didn't care about that. 
Carrie and Riker spent the next four hours watching over their companions. The few times they had to haul a survivor back to stop them drowning in their own vomit, but no more died. As the first tinge of red dawn lit the horizon, Captain Peter's eyes flickered open. He groaned, tried to roll over. Better stay where you are, Captain, Carrie said, kneeling beside him. Hell with that! Where am I? Despite Carrie's protests, the captain sat, leaning against the leg of a table to stay upright. He rubbed his stubbled chin, eyes bloodshot, as he surveyed the room. We took the settlement. We were eating, then Maya started throwing up. We think it was something in the food, Carrie whispered. Those bastards. Sweat trickled down Peter's pale face. How many? We lost six, sir, Riker said. Six, he whispered. That's... Almost half our crew. Carrie hung her head. We stayed silent as dawn broke, lighting the grisly scene in harsh reds and oranges. One by one, the other rebels woke. Some of them could sit and talk. Others barely managed to open their eyes. Carrie helped those she could, giving them water from the packs they'd carried across the desert, not daring to risk anything inside the bar. Her hunger had fled. In fact, she wasn't sure she ever wanted to eat again. By mid-morning, everyone that had survived was sitting, although some trembled so badly they couldn't hold a bottle to their mouths. What do we do, sir? Riker said. We need to pull out, Habrick said. He'd been one of the worst affected. Even his legs shook where they rested on the floor. A bullet mission. We can't, Carrie said. There are innocent people relying on us to rescue them. Then they'll send another team, Maverick said. We're finished. If we pull out now, they will have all died for nothing, Carrie said, pointing to the rows of bodies at the side of the room. Maverick's gaze slid over them, but didn't quite focus. In fact, the whole crew avoided looking at that part of the bar. This is my command, Peter said. Until we're... Ordered out, we continue the mission as planned. But, sir, Haverick said. That's final, Peter said. I informed command of what happened. They send their condolences, but they've given no instruction to pull out. Carrie nodded. The rebel command wouldn't abort a mission to save innocents. They had a job to do, and as much as she pitied the dead, she knew they'd want the fight to go on. Plus, she wanted to get her hands on the enforcers and deal out some justice. We go on as planned, Peter said. At nightfall. Is everyone clear on that? Mumbled affirmatives. Good. I suggest we all try to get some rest before... A high-pitched whistle filled the air. And then the world exploded. Chapter 3 Carrie hurtled back, caught in a spray of splintered wood and jagged hunks of metal. A deep boom followed by a wave of heat rushed through the space where the bar's front wall had been. The force of it knocked all the rebels into the air. Bodies caught in the rush twisted with Carrie until they all slammed into the far wall. Carrie landed hard on a table and crumpled to the floor. Shouts and groans filled the room, accompanied by the crackle of fire. Thick clouds filled the air. When Carrie tried to breathe, Dust stuck to the back of her throat, making her cough. She bent double, tried to use the top of her shirt as a filter, and managed to breathe. All around her, rebels lay groaning, or coughing, or dead. She blinked, the dust stinging her eyes. Flames licked what was left of the front wall, lighting a deep crater where the road used to be. Dark earth lay churned up at the bottom of the pit, giving rise to wisps of smoke. Carrie groaned, tried to sit. Pain encompassed her right arm. A jagged piece of wood jutted out of her shoulder. Blood dribbled from the wound and stained her shirt beneath the layers of dirt. She gripped the wood with her other hand, yanking it free. A warm wave of blood ran down her arm. She tore off the bottom of her shirt to make a rough bandage, struggling to tie it off with only one hand free. When she was sure she wasn't going to bleed to death, she crawled to the nearest body. Rich. He'd been alive five minutes ago. 
one of the lucky ones to survive the poison. But a sheet of metal had almost cut him in half, leaving his intestines showing through the gaping hole in his stomach. Carrie swallowed bile and kept crawling. As the dust cleared, more bodies came into view, some moaning, most silent. A large mound near the middle of the room moved. Riker, Carrie said, hurrying to him on her hands and knees. He rolled towards her. Blood poured from a cut above his eye, but otherwise he seemed uninjured. Are you okay? She said. No. Oh, my head hurts like I've been hit with a hammer. Consider yourself lucky. Peters was behind me. Carrie scrambled from Riker, deeper into the mess of broken tables and chairs, of shattered glass and twisted bodies. Peters lay against the wall, clutching his stomach. Captain, are you hurt? He opened one eye. Carrie, damn, am I glad to see you. What's wrong? Nothing. I'm fine, all things considered. Lucky I was standing behind Riker. He took most of the blast for me. Sir, I have to look for the others. Go, go. I'll help in a minute. Carrie used a shattered table to get to her feet. At least the dust wasn't so thick higher up and she could breathe without choking half to death. The next thirty minutes passed in a hellish daze. Carrie went from body to body, trying to sort the dead from the living, and then trying to sort those that had been dead before the blast to those who were dead after. A limb protruded from a mass of splintered timber. She gripped the broken tabletop with both hands and heaved, but her injured arm gave out before she'd lifted it even an inch. Riker, she said. He hurried from the other side of the room where he'd helped a woman with a broken arm. There's someone stuck under here. Riker gripped the table with massive hands and heaved. It lifted as if it weighed nothing at all. Peter lay beneath, curled up tight, covered in dust. Peter, Carrie said, can you hear me? Peter's eyes flicked open, flying to the table held precariously over her head and then to Carrie. I'm alive. Not if I drop this table on you, Riker said. Come on, I was caught in the blast too. Carrie helped Beta crawl out from beneath the maze of chairs and table legs. Red cuts covered her arms and legs, but otherwise she seemed okay. What happened? Beta said. Missile, Riker said. Carrie nodded as she did one more head count. That was it. They'd found everyone, and now the dead outnumbered the living. They huddled in a circle against the remaining wall, not bothering to try to find unbroken chairs. I thought this was supposed to be a simple mission, Carrie said. That's what I was told, Peter said. A basic civilian extraction. Why the hell are the Imperium putting so much firepower into stopping us? Carrie said. It's like they... Peter's communicator buzzed. He glanced down, frowned then sighed. We're being recalled. What? Carrie said. Thank the stars, Haverick said. That can't be right, Carrie said. Those are the orders. We're taking too much fire for an extraction. But there are innocent people waiting for us, Carrie said. Peters hung his head. I don't like it any more than you do, but orders are orders. Carrie gaped at him. There had to be a mistake. There was a whole village of innocent people waiting to be rescued, including children. How could they order a withdrawal now? We're heading back to the desert, Peter said. Gather what you can. He looked around the destroyed bar. Not that there's much left. Sir, please. We can't pull out now, Carrie said. Look, rookie, Haverick said. Didn't you hear? Orders are orders. Aren't we part of the rebellion so we don't have to follow blindly? Carrie said. Peter sighed. That might be why you joined, but I choose to follow this order. Things are too hot. But isn't that all the more reason to stay? Carrie said. The Imperium are putting too much firepower into keeping us here. They're hiding something. Peter's paused, swiped a hand over his forehead. We did take a lot of fire when we landed. Exactly, Carrie said. And it hasn't stopped since. And now they're wasting missiles on us? Why would they risk that kind of time and attention? 
He just typed into his communicator, still frowning. Carrie fiddled with her necklace, the hunk of KTM Piper had given her so long ago. Surely the upper command had to realise there was something going on. Peter's communicator buzzed. He glanced at it, shook his head. They're not interested. They'd rather get us out alive. I can't say I disagree with them. But, Carrie said, I'm sorry, but that's the final word on the matter. Look lively, people. We're moving out before those bastards aim another missile at us. Carrie scrambled to her feet, ignoring the pain in her arm. Sir, please. Carrie, Peter said, a tightness coming into his voice. Don't push this. I told you. Orders are orders. Then, with all due respect, sir, I resign my place in this platoon. Peter's frowned. What? I resign. It's my right, isn't it? The rebellion is all about choice, and I choose to stay and finish the mission. It's suicide, Peter said. You've seen the firepower we're facing. You won't get past that alone. She won't be alone, Riker said. He lumbered into the light beside Carrie. I also respectfully withdraw from the unit. Peter's rubbed his forehead. Look, you two, I understand. I do, and I commend your bravery. But this... I also withdraw, Peter said. And me, Terry said. You can't all be serious, Peter said. Carrie said nothing. Of course the upper command was pulling out, even though they'd promised to save those people. She should have known better. No one ever stuck to their word. Everyone was a coward in the end. They're mad, Haverick said. Maybe there was something else in the food. Sir, I don't feel comfortable leaving them here when they might not be in a fit state. I ask that they be deemed unfit for making decisions and- Put a pie in it, Havrick, Riker said. Carrie and I didn't eat anything, remember? We might be the only sane ones here. Havrick's mouth snapped shut, a muscle of his jaw pulsing. Whoa, Peter said. Take it easy. It's like you said, the whole point of the rebellion is choice. If you want to stay here, then I won't stop you. But it's a terrible idea. You'll be shot down in hours. It's a risk I have to take, Carrie said. We made a promise to save those people. Riker and the others nodded. Very well, Peter said. What about you? He looked to the remaining rebels. They shook their heads and stared at the floor. Very well, get your things. We move out in five. Havrick and the others got busy, sifting through the wreckage to find their bags and weapons. Peters looked over at Carrie, Riker, Terry, and Beta, his wrinkled face drawn tight. Is there anything I can do to make you change your mind? No, sir, Carrie said. At least, not mine. No, Riker said. I agree with Carrie. I joined the rebellion to help people. This is what I meant to do. The others echoed his words. Can't leave you transport, Peter said. The ships that pick us up will be taking enough fire as it is. You'll have to find your own way off this rock. Carrie tried not to let anything show on her face, but that was bad news. They were on a tiny asteroid in the middle of a war zone. It's not like they could hitchhike with a city's worth of refugees. We understand, Riker said. We'll find a way. Peter's nodded once. I respect what you're doing. I hope by some miracle you survive to see it through. So do I, Carrie said. Peter shook each of their hands in turn before leading the others around the side of the crater. He glanced back from the edge of the smoking ruin. You're not out of the rebellion, by the way. We won't let brave soldiers like you get away that easily. Carrie saluted. Seconds later, Riker, Beta, and Terry did the same. Peter saluted once before disappearing into the darkness outside. Carrie's stomach rolled. Peter's might have respect for them, but they didn't change the facts. They'd effectively been abandoned to continue the mission on their own. No backup, and no resources except the survival gear they carried on their backs. Where the hell did that leave them? Chapter 4 a harsh wind howled across no man's land. 
It tugged at the thin tufts of grass, the only vegetation, and sent up whirls of red sand. The air carried the smell of burning, plastic, metal, flesh. Carrie's clothes flapped against her skin as she crouched at the edge of the flat expanse, Riker, Terry, and Beta beside her. The settlement where they'd been abandoned by the others loomed at their backs, still smouldering from the missile attack. They will have seen the others leave, Riker said. They must have been watching. Same as they're watching us now, Terry said. Her dark hair, with a single neon pink streak running through it, whipped behind her in the hot wind. Hopefully they think we've all gone home, Carrie said, and given up on this mission. Feels like they're watching, Beta said, staring back at the settlement. Either way, Carrie said, it doesn't change what we have to do. The civs are hiding in caves ten miles from here. A lot can happen in ten miles, Beta said. Carrie's jaw clenched. You volunteered to stay with us. Beta hung her head. I didn't know they'd leave us without transport. How are we supposed to evacuate? We'll cross that bridge when we get to it, Carrie said. Or you can stay here and hope for a pickup. No, Beta said. No. I said I'd see the mission through and I will. Good, Carrie said. She couldn't afford to have weakness in the group. Not now. We move out. The sooner we find these sieves, the sooner we can get off this rock. She walked in a crouch in case gunners were watching from the shadows of the settlement and into the sands of no man's land. Her boots sank into the desert sand, grains spilling over the tops and scratching her legs. Despite the grisly scene they left behind the bar, Carrie found her stomach achy. How long had it been since she'd had a real meal? Too long. A headache pounded at the front of her skull. A hunger headache, she was sure. But how could she worry about that when so many of her fellow rebels had died? And what about the refugees ahead? She doubted they'd have much chance to eat. Riker ambled at Carrie's side. His massive shoulders stood out in the shifting sands of the desert, no matter how much he bent over. If the enforcers were watching, he was sure to be spotted. Carrie squinted against the glare of sunrise, scouting for a hint of enemies in the sands, but heat shimmers and tricks of the desert made it impossible to see properly. Hopefully, the enemy found it just as difficult. On the next step, Carrie's boot didn't sink quite as far, instead coming to rest on something solid with a faint click. She froze. Everybody, stop! Riker and the others halted in place. What is it? he said, pulling his gun over his shoulder. Carrie swallowed, throat dry, and bent double without moving her feet. With gentle strokes, she brushed the sand away from her right boot. Grains kept falling into the slight depression, but eventually she cleared enough to see the glint of metal. Carrie straightened, trying to keep her breath steady and her weight even. Mines! Riker's face lost all colour, and he took half a step towards her. No! She held up her hand. You might disturb the sand, and there's bound to be others. They stood glued in place like mannequins. If the enemy were watching, now would be a good time to start taking shots. Now, if Carrie's weight moved just a little, it might be enough to set off the bomb and they'd all be caught in the blast. What the hell do we do? Beta said. Peters took all the sweep equipment with him. We don't panic, Carrie said. Seeing as it's my foot on the damn mind and I can keep calm, then you can too. She hoped they couldn't see the cold drips of sweat that trickled down the back of her neck. On the bright side, it hadn't blown up as soon as she stepped on it. Hot wind carried sand into the depression and Carrie's foot, hiding the mine. You all need to clear the area while I disarm it, Carrie said, so you don't get caught in the blast. We're not going anywhere, Riker said. Riker, be stupid, Carrie said. I need a clear area in case I need a quick disposal. But that's an order. All of you, back the way we came. Ten yards at least. They shared uneasy glances. Carrie could almost hear their thoughts. She was as good as dead. Boots off, Carrie said. You've all got ropes, so do a full sweep behind. We're going... old-fashioned. The other two can retreat, Riker said. I'm staying to help you. Disarming a mine is hard enough, let alone when you're standing on top of it. Riker... I swear I will shoot you in the leg myself if you don't take off your boots and retreat. Now! They glared at each other, wills battling. But in the end, Riker looked away. 
After all, Carrie was the one with her foot on a mine. She figured that gave her some kind of leverage. Riker wrenched off his boots, tied the laces together, then tied the end of a rope around them. The other two did the same. Riker hurled his boots towards the settlement. They landed with a solid thud. Carrie flinched. If they did set off a mine, it would be a close thing for them to escape the blast from this distance. Riker dragged his boots across the sand, running the rope hand over hand until his shoes dangled by his legs. He followed the trail his boots had left in the sand. When he passed Carrie, he reached out to her shoulder. Don't, Carrie said, her voice husky. It might. Riker flinched, snatching his hand back. He passed behind Carrie, out of her line of sight. The others repeated his actions with their own boots, retracing their path through the sand. All of them shuffled, dragging their feet with the hopes of tapping a mine and feeling it, rather than stepping right on top. It wasn't guaranteed. The same as sweeping with a couple of boots tied together wasn't guaranteed. But it was the best they had. Carrie didn't relax until she couldn't hear their footsteps or breathing anymore. Are you clear? We're clear, Riker said, his voice coming from somewhere behind her. Carrie nodded, and keeping her weight exactly balanced, she bent double. Blood rushed to her head as she brushed away the sand, scraping a hole around the mine so she could see every side of it. Basic enough, pressure activation, hair trigger too by the look of it, which meant that if she lifted her foot even half an inch, then the thing would blow. Carrie straightened, allowing the blood to flow from her head and ease her thudding headache. Are you okay? Riker called. Just assessing the situation. Carrie gazed out over the desert. As far as last views went, it wasn't so bad. Dawn cast bright reds and pinks over the sand. She took a deep breath, but damn, she wouldn't go down without a fight. Carrie bent once more, studying the outer casing. The trigger, and therefore her foot, rested right on top of the access panel, so she couldn't even get inside to deactivate it. Sweat trickled down her nose and dripped to the sand, staining it a darker colour. If she couldn't deactivate it, then the only way to get out of this mess alive was to prevent the trigger from releasing. For that, she had to hope there weren't any secondary triggers. At least she wouldn't survive long enough to regret anything. She reached down, pressing her fingers onto the tiny edge of the trigger that poked out from beneath her boot. With all her strength she pressed, digging the mine a little deeper into the sand. At the same time, she eased her right foot a little to the side, revealing more of the trigger. She covered it with the rest of her fingers, keeping the pressure constant. Inch by inch, she removed her foot from the trigger, replacing it with her right hand. Her back ached from bending almost in half for so long, and stars danced at the edges of her vision. She kept pressure on the trigger while she scooped the mine with her left hand. She stayed like that for a handful of heartbeats, listening for some kind of activation or hint of another trigger. Nothing. She straightened, the mine held as far from her body as she could manage while still pressing the trigger. Very slowly she turned, sure to keep her feet on the square of sand she already knew to be safe. She looked at Riker over the top of the bomb. Ari, what are you doing? he said. She'd hoped to be able to throw it away or pin the trigger somehow, but she hadn't counted on how damn heavy the thing was. There was no way she could keep pressure on it with just one hand. Hell, she couldn't bring Riker into this. And besides, she didn't need anyone's help. Wind tickled the back of her neck. They'd been standing exposed in the desert for at least half an hour. If the enemy were watching, they were bound to have been spotted. Time was ticking. Carrie glared at the mind. Damn it. How the hell could she get rid of it? Once again, she met Riker's gaze. Riker, who had saved her ass on more than one occasion. If she couldn't rely on him, who the hell could she rely on? Riker, she said. I need you to pin the trigger down. I've got elastic straps at my belt. Riker hurried forward without hesitation. He took the straps from Carrie's waist and wrapped them around the mine. He pulled them tight, just to the side of Carrie's fingers. He inched the straps onto the trigger, easing it beneath her fingertips. Okay, go back, Carrie said. Carrie, go back. There's no point in both of us dying if this doesn't work. Riker shuffled backward, never taking his gaze from Carrie's face. When she was sure he was out of range, she drew a deep breath and pulled her hand away from the trigger. She expected the thing to explode in her face, turning her to a spatter of red on the sand. 
Nothing. She sagged. It had worked. She eased the mine onto the ground, not risking throwing it. She would have liked nothing better than to sink to the desert and rest. Her back and neck ached from bending over and from the high-strung tension, but she couldn't. We have to keep moving, Carrie said, but we do a full sweep each step. If they've got eyes on us, Terry said. Exactly, Carrie said. We don't have much time. She pulled her boots off, tied them together, and hurled them across the desert. They landed in a puff of sand. She dragged them back to her as the others joined in. Toss, drag, step. Toss, drag, step. Riker threw his boots a good twenty yards away. He dragged them back, but just one tug later, the sand all around the boots exploded. Grains shot twenty feet in the sky, accompanied by a blast of hot air and a brief flash of flames. Sand rained down over Carrie and her companions. She threw her arm over her eyes and ducked. More sand patted their heads. The noise from the explosion echoed across the desert, taking forever to fade. Well, Riker said, that was close. Carrie peeked out from beneath her arm. The desert just in front of them had been reduced to a crater of churned earth and sand. If they didn't know we were here before, Beta said, they do now. Riker dragged the rope back from the crater and held up the freight end. Great. Now I have no boots. I think that's the least of our problems, Terry said. Do you see something? Carrie said, reaching for her gun. No, but now, Terry said, turning a slow circle. If we found two mines just on our one path through the cell, how many are there? Carrie's neck tingled as she looked out across the sand. Terry was right. If the rest of the stretch of no man's land was the same as this, then there were hundreds, perhaps thousands of mines hidden beneath the desert. It makes you wonder, Terry said, why is the Imperium so desperate for us not to get to the surfs? Chapter 5 Carrie and her companions spent the rest of the day moving through the desert in jerks and starts. They encountered two more mines before sunset, leaving them with just Carrie's boots to test the sand. They'd taken to trudging in single file, inching along with wary steps. The sun beat down on the back of Carrie's neck, scorching her exposed skin. Sunset came as a great relief, once again painting the desert in bright reds. She'd thought that the ten-mile journey would only take them a few hours. She hadn't counted on having to move at a snail's pace, stopping every few paces to throw her boots and drag them through the sand. Sunset caught a black mound in the sand ahead. Carrie paused, the others coming to a stop behind her, and tried to make it out in the dying light. If it was the enemy, they probably would have shot us by now, Terry said. And that was true enough. So Carrie threw her boot forward and followed in its wake. As they got closer, the mound resolved itself into a torn canvas tent with a man huddled beneath it. He made no move to attack, but Carrie kept her hand on her gun all the same. He looked up at them as they approached, the whites of his wide eyes gleaming. You made it across the deathly sands. Only just, Carrie said. She eyed the water bottle by his right leg. It had been a long time since her own water ran out, and the desert had taken every speck of moisture from her. Are you here to kill me? He said. Not unless you give us reason to, Carrie said. He studied each one of them in turn. You don't look like enforcers. We're not. I heard, he said, some of his fear fading, replaced with something else. That there were rebels in the northern settlement. Carrie said nothing. Often the best policy for extracting information. I heard they were looking for a certain hidden place. Do you know this hidden place? Carrie said. The man licked his lips. How do I know I can trust you? We have no way to prove who we are, Carrie said. Except that we just spent all day walking through that hell of a desert, Riker said. And we lost three sets of good boots. The man's eyes gleamed. You've really come to rescue us? Yes, Carrie said. He eyed them. We expected more of you. There were complications. Take us to the caves. We can plan from there, Carrie said. The man climbed to his feet. It's not far. No mines on the side either. 
Carrie hadn't noticed the gradual change, the sand becoming more like dirt, the tufts of grass more frequent. Still a desert, but perhaps slightly less inhospitable than the expanse they'd spent the whole day trudging through. We've been waiting for you for a long time, the man said, voice trembling. We were beginning to think. We are here now. Praise the sands. The general said that you... Carrie snatched hold of the old man's arm. The general? What general? The man's face paled. Carrie tightened her grip. What? General? General Claxus? The man whispered. Claxus is here, Carrie said. The man was a legend. A deadly weapon in the rebellion. The old man nodded. But please don't tell him I told you. I thought you knew. Carrie released him and nudged him forward. No wonder the Imperium were putting so much firepower into stopping the mission. If the General were here, they'd do almost anything to see him dead. It would cripple the revolution. Surely Peters and the rest of the command couldn't have known, otherwise they wouldn't have recalled the mission. They trudged in silence for the next ten minutes, covering far more ground now that they didn't have to stop every step to check for mines. The entrance is just over. Huge spotlights burst into life. Their harsh glow slashed through the night and caught Carrie and her companions in a circle of blinding light. Carrie snatched a gun from her belt and pointed it at the spotlights, but she couldn't see anything beyond their glare. Riker, Terry, and Beda all had weapons out, but the old man lay whimpering at their feet. Put your weapons down, rebels, or be killed, a deep voice said from the darkness. Carrie kicked the man at her feet. You betrayed us. No, he whimpered. I swear, I didn't know they were here. He sounded scared enough. But the entrance to the caves is close. He nodded, but didn't lift his head from where it was wedged between his knees. Close enough that they'll see the lights. He nodded again. We're going to die, Peter said. We should have left with Peters and the others. There was no way they were going to let us. Surrender if you want, Gary said. But don't expect the rebellion to break you out. This is your last warning. Put your weapons down. Carrie's chest tightened. They couldn't put down their weapons. There was no way the Imperium would let them live. They'd meet an unfortunate accident, probably right here in the sands. Carrie, Riker said. I hope you have a plan. We have to buy time, she said trying not to move her mouth so the enforcers wouldn't see. We might get back up. To my right, Terry said. You see a gap in the spotlights. Carrie slid her gaze in that direction. Sure enough, the spotlights didn't crowd quite so close together there. Twenty Tokens says that's where the guy in charge is, Terry said. Riker, think you can do a full spray of that area? You bet. On my mark. We all run for that spot. Hopefully the rest of the soldiers they've got stationed won't risk firing. You know our chances of surviving, Riker said. Better than standing here like an executioner's lineup, Carrie said. Besides, we're rebels. We go down fighting. Heat from the spotlights burned Carrie's face while the light of them stung her eyes. She had to assume the enemy didn't know exactly where the civilians, and then the general, were hiding. Otherwise, they would have killed them all, including the man at Carrie's feet. But they were close. Too close. You, Carrie said, nudging the man with her foot. When we run, I suggest you run with us. He whimpered. And there was nothing more Carrie could do. He either came with them and had a chance of surviving, or he stayed curled up in the sand and probably got tortured for information. Ready? Carrie said. Go! She turned and sprinted towards the faint patch of darkness. Beta and Terry pelted beside her. Riker ran at their backs, firing over the top of their heads with his massive gun. Bright purple blasts lit up the sand like fireworks, brighter even than the spotlights, accompanied by loud bangs. The purple blast careened into the pool of darkness, lighting up a swarm of soldiers in gleaming Imperium uniforms. Armoured enforcers stood to either side, guns ready. But Riker's heavy plasma rounds carved through them, sending bodies hurtling to either side, leaving a clear path through which Carrie and her companions ran. The rest of the army erupted with shouts and erratic gunfire, but only those closest to the officials risked firing. A hot blast of red hurtled past Carrie's cheek, 
another whizzed by her leg. She kept her head down, sprinting as fast as she could past the spotlights and into the black expanse of the desert beyond. The spotlights would blind the soldiers, just as much as they had blinded her. Carrie sprinted until the shots stopped, only then slowing and turning. Riker ran right behind her, limping, but otherwise okay. Terry and Beda jogged behind him, with the old man limping and shuffling at the back. In the bright glow of the spotlights, soldiers swarmed. They climbed into armoured vehicles, huge weapons slung over their shoulders. They're bound to have infrared, Terry said. Carrie stood rooted to the sand. It had been impossible to know how many people, or what equipment, the Imperium had behind the spotlights. Now that she saw, all hope fled her chest. She couldn't outrun or outfight that. There was a mini army against four rebels and an old man. Chapter 6 Carrie pushed down her panic. It had been her desire to stay and finish the mission. She'd led Riker and the others here. It was her responsibility to get them out again. She gripped the old man's shoulders, shaking him. What channel is the general on? The old man blinked, unfocused. What channel is he on? What? 43. Local encrypt. Carrie's fingers raced over her communicator. General, she said. General, do you copy? This is Carrie from the Renegades. Crackling static. What if he didn't believe her? Or what if he was already dead? An eternity later, the static stopped. Code word. Carrie licked her dry lips. I'm sorry, sir. I don't have one. But I have your scout here. He's a bit shaken up. I'm afraid I don't have time to explain. But you've got a lot of company above ground. We've seen them. You're here to get us out. Carrie gazed back at the swarming army. How long did she have before the infrared guns picked her out from the darkness? A minute, maybe. I'm afraid things haven't gone as expected. There's only four of us. Enforcer bastards. Exactly, sir. Things aren't looking good for us either. I have a plan. Do you have some explosives? Some. We don't have much time. We can distract them, but your people will need to plant explosives. It'll be dangerous. You'll distract them with four people? Yes, sir. You've got balls, I'll give you that. We need ten minutes. Can you buy us that much? Yes, sir. See you on the other side. Carrie lowered her communicator. Her three companions stared at her from the darkness, eyes gleaming in the spotlights. The old man had crumpled to the ground, rocking back and forth. How he meant to distract them, Beta said, throwing her hand back to indicate the army. We do our best, Carrie said. It's the only plan we've got. She didn't like it, though. She'd have to rely on the general's people to place and detonate the bombs. How could she rely on people she'd never met? She drew a deep breath. She had no choice, and right now they had to move. They're going to start shooting at us, Carrie said. We have to run. Different directions. You've all still got your small explosives. They nodded. Riker lifted his coat to reveal a half dozen grenades strapped to a belt across his chest. Good, Harry said. Do what you can. Draw their fire. We need to buy ten minutes. A crack of shots and beams of plasma hurtled across the desert from the spotlights. Go, Harry said. She scrambled away from the group, sprinting across the sand. It wasn't much of a plan, she had to admit, but damn it, it was all they had. She kept running until the spatter of gunfire stopped. Hopefully the others had managed to avoid being shot. Now the enforcers would have to scour the whole desert for four, five, if you counted the old man, specks of heat. Carrie crouched low and edged towards the spotlights. Smaller vehicles stood out against the lights, but there were no ships. However the enforcers had arrived, their ships were elsewhere. Good. That would make it hard for them to get away. She inched to within half a dozen yards of the small army, close enough that she could hear them talking and cursing to each other. She unclipped a grenade from her belt, pulled the pin, and threw. It landed at the edge of the army, exploding in a bright burst of flames and shrapnel. Screams broke the night, 
One of the vehicles caught fire, flames licking the tortured metal. Enforcers swarmed towards the blaze. Bright torches fixed to the tops of their guns swept across the desert. Carrie tried to get away, but one beam caught her full in the face. There she is! Shots rang out. A dozen streams of plasma careening towards Carrie. She scrambled, trying to dive, but she'd been caught half-turned. Off balance. A sudden weight slammed into her waist, carrying her sideways out of the line of fire. She landed hard in the sand, kept rolling, another body spinning with her. They came to a stop, and Carrie scrambled to her feet. Terry, she said. Better keep running, Terry said, turning and hurtling in the other direction. Carrie wanted to say thank you, but words failed her. Terry sprinted across the sand, her silhouette stark against the bright spotlights. She careened towards the surrounding shadows, legs pumping. A bright spear of light shattered the darkness. It slammed into Terry's chest, knocking her sideways. Terry! Carrie said, taking a half step towards the other woman. Terry's chest lay open, blood, charred organs dotting the sand around her. Bile rose in Carrie's throat. It couldn't be. Terry had just saved her life. She'd been fine. It couldn't end like that. Carrie! Riker's thick arms wrapped around Carrie's waist and he hauled her off the ground, carrying her like a sack of supplies. She fought and writhed. She needed to get back to Terry to save her. She's gone, Riker said. Harry, she's gone. Carrie drew a ragged breath. She saved my life. I know. He set her down, but kept running. Carrie staggered after him. Terry, dead. Her fault. We all managed to set off some grenades, Riker said. It should keep them busy. His words took a while to get through Carrie's muddled thoughts. She blinked, looked back. Tiny fires burned between the spotlights. They looked like nothing compared to the swarms of soldiers and vehicles. She glanced at her communicator. Three more minutes. I have to go back, she said. Riker stumbled to a stop. She did, Carrie. There's nothing you can do. No. The explosions. I have to make sure the General's people detonate the explosions. They will. That's their job. We've already done ours, and it cost both Terry and Beta their lives. Carrie swallowed. Beta too? Riker nodded, face drawn. Then I have to make sure this works. I have to make sure they detonate. She took a half step towards the spotlights. Carrie, we have to trust that they'll do their job. Riker wrenched her around, pulling her away from the blaze of spotlights. She glared at him. How could he not see, not understand, even after all this time? If they wanted something done, if they wanted to save those people, they had to do it themselves. Didn't I come back for you when we were stranded on Brecken? He shook her. Yes, she said through gritted teeth, but that didn't prove anything. Riker was different to everyone else. He at least stuck by his word, but just because he'd come back didn't mean that the General's people would. And didn't Terry risk her life to save you? Another shake. Carrie's throat tightened. She hadn't expected that. She could still see Terry running through the darkness, the bright spark of plasma streaming towards her. Well, Riker said. Yes. So, please, just this once, trust that someone is coming. But, Carrie twisted to look over her shoulder at the swarming army. They're coming. Carrie wanted to pull away, to run back to the fight. But how could she and Riker alone take on the swarming masses of the enforcers? She itched to go back to the battle. Unless she'd go down fighting. Forced herself to draw a deep breath and stay still. Riker was right. He had come back for her, just like Terry. Perhaps not everyone was bad. A deep boom rolled across the desert. The small flames that the enforcers had been battling were swallowed by a massive inferno that engulfed the enforcers and their vehicles. Blistering heat seared across the desert, forcing Carrie to turn away to shield her face. By the time she risked looking back, the entire Enforcer Division had been reduced to ash. Most of the spotlights were gone. 
A few lay flickering on the ground, lighting piles of debris. Carrie staggered toward the wreckage. He did it. Riker followed, his broad face lit by the dying flames. But how many died? They were in forces, Harry said. She was more worried about the people trapped in the tunnel. How could they possibly have survived that blast? She ran across the ground, her boots slipping on loose grains. Heat from the flames grew stronger as she got closer, scorching her skin. Still, she pressed on, around the worst of the heat, in the direction the old scout had indicated. Hunks of metal and bits of armoured vehicle dotted the sand. She staggered, slipping on a steep slope that led down into a tunnel. Carrie skidded to a stop, peering into the blackness. General Claxus, are you there? Is anyone there? She tried her communicator as well. Riker joined her. Their voices echoed back to them from the caves. Carrie's heart thundered. What if they were all dead? What if all those people had died to get rid of one tiny platoon of enforcers? And what about the general? She inched into the cave, the darkness swallowing her. Anyone? Faint scratching her head. Carrie hurried forward, careless of the gloom that swallowed her. Riker landed a heavy hand on her shoulder, pulling her short. We don't know what's down here. You could run off a cliff. They might be hurt. And you'll be no good to them dead. Are you the two from the radio? A new voice said from the darkness. General, Carrie said, recognizing his rough voice. You're alive. Confirmed. A middle-aged man came out of the darkness. The shadows hid most of his face except the gleam of white hair on his head. The enforcers? Gone, Carrie said. Good. We have to move out before they send reinforcements. Where's your ship parked? Carrie swallowed, glad that the darkness hid her face. We don't have one, sir. I beg your pardon, recruit? We have no ship. The rest of our platoon withdrew. Our pilots would have picked them up, and they'll be long gone by now. Withdrew? When? Last night, Carrie said. Late. The general's lips twisted, revealing a flash of white teeth. Right after my report. I should have known. But, sir, we're here to help in any way we can. Your well, heroes, the both of you. I've got fifty sieves down here. A few of them know how to hold a gun, but that's about all. Carrie tilted her head, and, sure enough, she could hear rustling and movement deeper in the tunnels. I had to get off the planet. Based on how fiercely the Enforcers had been fighting, it was only a matter of time before they sent back up. The Enforcers must have had ships, she said. But there weren't any outside. Lead on, the General said. The sooner we get out of here, the better. Carrie and Riker hurried up into the glow of flames, heat washing over them. You're alive. The old man who had guided them to the cave stumbled out of the darkness, blood dripping from a cut on his cheek. Drones! Glad to see you're still with us, General Claxus said. These enforcers had ships. Where are they? Johns blinked, dazed, then turned and shuffled into the desert. Not far away, the glow from the fiery wreckage lit upon a half dozen ships. The nearest ones lay crumpled and scorched from the blast, but those behind seemed okay. Carrie ran for them, Riker close behind. She'd wired a few ships in her time. In seconds, she had the maintenance hatch off and was fiddling with the mechanisms inside. She glanced up long enough to see a ragged bunch of refugees stumbling over the stand towards her. Get them inside, Carrie said. This won't be an easy fight. By the time the last refugee climbed on board, Carrie had the engine running puttered and purred like music to her ears. She climbed on board and slammed the door shut behind her. Refugees huddled everywhere so that she had to step over arms and legs to get to the captain's chair. The general was already there, initiating takeoff. Any hostiles? Riker said. Not on the scanners. The ship lifted, tilted, then shot upward toward the distant expanse of stars. Carrie held her breath until they broke through atmosphere without being shot at. She sagged against the wall beside Riker. The general seemed absorbed in his communicator. Remind me not to get abandoned anywhere without a ship again, she said. When well, you can hotwire like that, Riker said. What's the problem? It's harder when people are shooting at you. 
I wonder where they've put Peters and the rest of our platoon. We'll have to meet up with them and... You won't be meeting up with them, General Claxus said. Carrie faltered. What? Why? The general turned to them, face ashen. The revolution is over. Carrie couldn't process what he'd said. No. That's impossible. We're winning. Claxus shook his head, lifting his wrist to show his communicator. The message just came in. We're finished. Oh, Carrie said, feeling as if the whole world were imploding on her. No, that's not right. We're winning. We can't give up now. The Imperium still haven't paid for what they've done. It's already happened, Glaxa said. The leaders of the revolution have been arrested. More than 10,000 rebels slaughtered on Zenith in the last 24 hours alone. We're done. Carrie could only shake her head. Riker wrapped his arm around her shoulders, but it might as well have been a snake coiling around her throat for all the good it did. I'm sorry, Glaxa said. Maybe if I'd found the boy. But he wasn't here. Harry blinked, trying to grab onto anything that made sense. Boy? What boy? Claxus shook his head. The whole reason I was here, rumours said a next gen had been born here in the settlement. Maybe if I'd found him. Riker stiffened. Sir, you can't be serious. Next gens are just legends. Lexus blinked, shook himself, and glanced up at Riker. Of course they are. Sorry. I think I must have hit my head during that blast. Forget I said anything. Carrie could only stare at him. The revolution wasn't over. It couldn't be. Her hands clenched into fists. She'd show this coward how dead the revolution was. The old man wouldn't stand a chance against... Riker's arm tightened around her shoulders, and he steered her away from the general into a quiet part of the ship away from the refugees. I'm going to kill him, Kari said. No, Riker said. This isn't his fault. The revolution can't be over. We were going to win. The corners of Kari's eyes stung, but she refused to cry, refused to show any weakness. Thousands of people have died. It's too many. This has to end. And go back to being slaves? Carrie said, ready to strangle Riker too. No, we just... We just have to fight a different way. Carrie scowled. What? With your politics? If it works... Won't. Hurry. The revolution isn't over. I'll keep fighting. I'll fight until every enforcer is dead. Or I am. Riker winced. I'll help you, however I can. But please, can we lay low just for now? They're going to be looking for rebels. They'll want our blood. Carrie turned from him to glare out at the distant stars. She wanted to go down fighting. How could she possibly bear to knuckle down and live even one more day under the enforcers? But what good would it do for her to be shot down in the middle of the street? Riker was right. There were better ways. Different ways. Fine, she said. Thank you, Riker said. But this fight isn't over. You've finished Starship Renegades, Beginnings, by S.J. Bryant, read for you by Richard Parry. The journey continues. A derelict ship. The salvage of a lifetime. A ragtag crew. Join the Starship Renegades in Starship Renegades Uprising. Find more at saffronbryant.com.